methods so method is method contains a set of statements so if you want to reuse a set of statements so with the help of methods we can reuse so a method has name parameters separated by comma body and body wrapped using curly braces and a return type so these things a method has and methods are declared within a class or a struct by specifying the access modifier like public protected private internal so it's up to you what the access modifier you want to give for a method so we can define a method let's say how we can define a method so you are you can see here this is main is also a method here and this method receiving a parameter here for command argument here and parameter type is array here void is return type main is method name and if you will see we have not mentioned any access modifier you can mention here access modifier as well let's say public now this is a public access modifier because by default access modifier for a class method is private same way here we can add other class and we can add another methods as well so let's say we can add a class here let's say i am adding a class calculator in calculate class i can add a method for adding two number so it is a return type method name is add and as a method parameter we receiving here let's say num1 and the num2 define the num2 data type as integer so these are the method parameters so now method body we are defining using the curly braces now we have just written the sum of these two numbers so this is the method access modifier this is the method name these are the method receiving parameters so we have two parameters here num1 and the num2 and in desire data type for the method parameters here and in the method body in curly braces we are you can write here more than one statement but here we are writing only one statement and this one statement is returning the sum of these two numbers so this is about methods method overloading and method overriding in method overloading a class has more than one method with same name but having the different signature so method overloading happens within a same class and method overloading objective is to add or extend the behavior of an existing method so method signature includes here number of parameters and type of parameters method signature does not include method return type and method access modifier so when we are defining the the same type of method within a class so for method overloading make sure you have the different number of parameters or different types of parameters means their data type should be different the method return type and the method access modifier does not include in the method signature and method overloading is an example of compile time polymorphism since actual method calling is resolved at compile time because it is decided which method we are going to call at compile time it is not decided on the run time so that's it is example of compile time polymorphism let's understand method overloading with the help of an example so here i have a i have a console application with the name method overloading and overriding and here let's say we have a class calculator and in calculator class i am adding a method like public integer i am adding a add method for adding two number so just define the data type let's say integer number one comma integer num2 now we just return the sum of these two number like num1 plus num2 so this is the method we are using for adding two numbers if you want to overload this method so we have here two option either change the method parameters data type either change the number of parameters so let me change the method parameters data type. i am just using here decimal and decimal here our return type now would be a decimal so this is example of method overloading because this time we have just changed the method parameters data type and it is not mandatory like you have to change both the parameter data type if you will change only one method parameter data type it is sufficient we can also overload the same method by adding the different number of parameter let's add a one more parameter let's say num3 now i'm returning the sum of three numbers so all these three methods are add but they are accepting the different numbers of parameter with different data types now let's see how the method overloading methods looks when you are accessing in visual studio let's create the object of calculator class let's say clc and when you will try to access this clc object so you can see here when i am calling the add method you can see 
I am getting here three overloaded version of the add method. So this is the one. In case of one, you have to pass decimal. Then two, we have both the parameters are integer type. Then we have third. In the third first parameter is decimal, and last two parameters are integer type. You can see how it is showing the overloaded method here. So here I am calling the method accepting the integer value. So let's pass one comma six. So just assign its result into a integer variable. Now console dot write the result. Now just run the application. You will see the output as six plus one seven. That's it. Console dot eight key to prevent the closing of console window. You can see we are getting here seven as output. Method overriding. So let's now let's understand what is method overriding. So in method overriding, a drive class has the same methods with exactly the same signature of the method as we have in base class. And the objective of method overriding is it is going to change the behavior of an existing method in the base class. And unlike method overloading, here method must have the same access modifier: public, protected, internal. In method overriding, you cannot use the private access modifier. You have to use at least public, protected, and internal. So all the access modifier should be same in base class as well as in drive class. If you are using the method overriding, but there is no such rule in method overloading. And method overriding is an example of runtime polymorphism since actual method call is resolved at runtime. So it is going to be decided runtime which method it is going to be call here. So let's see. Let's understand the method overriding with the help of an example. So here I have the same sample which. We used in method overloading, but this time just using the different sample. Let's say we have a class employee, and in the employee class, let's say every employee has some base salary, so decimal base salary. So we have some base salary, and here there is a method, and in the method we are returning the salary, like calculate salary, not just return here salary. But in company we Might have sales employee. So let's say we have one more class, sales employee. So sales employee will also have the salary here. But in case of sales employee, we have the sales bonus as well. But sales bonus is not going to be applicable to each and every type of employee. Let's say if you have the technical employee, let's say software engineer, so they don't have the the sales bonus. But the sales employee have the sales bonus. So for calculating the salary of the sales employee, let's make sure it is going to inherit the employee class here. So what is here? This calculate salary method. We want to override. We want to change its behavior, as we have in parent class employee. Because in case of sales employee, salary will be calculated using the salary plus sales bonus. So how it should be? Salary plus sales bonus. To override this method, make sure in the base class you make. Your method as virtual, and here use override keyword, and make sure salary is here public, so that we can access in child class, miss in drive class. So this is an example of method overriding, because here in the employee we are calculating the salary here, but in the sales employee we want to override the behavior of the default method calculate salary, because. For the sales person, you have to add the sales bonus as well. So this is a perfect example for method overriding. Now, when you will create the object for the sales employee, you will get the way which method you are going to call. So just define here sales employee like EMP equal to new sales employee. Now we just define the employee salary. For example, I'm just writing here itself like EMP dot sales bonus. That same using here one thousand rupees and six bonus. Now just get the salary. As a decimal, we will get the salary. It will be here. E M P. Then we get calculate salary. So here it will be decided on the runtime which method we are going to call here. Now I can show the salary. So we will get here thirteen thousand as a salary because it is a sales employee object. You can see we are getting here thirteen thousand as a salary. But if the same Object I am going to create for normal employee class. So let's say I am creating here for normal employee. It will return only salary. Let's say here base employee class object. I am using a base EMP. Then we are getting here only salary option. Let's say ten thousand. Now if you will call here, we are getting here only calculate salary. 
we are not getting a sales bonus because we don't have any bonus for so in this area we will get here only so just use here decimal sell as a salary this way we can use and make sure we will get the next line so slash and so we will get here 10,000 and 13,000 so 10,000 let's say you can think it is a software engineer salary and 13,000 it's like a sales person salary because here we have sales bonuses so this is about the method overloading and method overriding method hiding so we have one more concept that is method hiding so method hiding is a way to hide the method of base class into drive class using the new keyword so here for hiding a method in the drive class we use the new keyword so unlike method overriding the base class method you don't need to declare as virtual if you remember in case of method overriding we explicitly mention the virtual keyword so that we can override the same method in the drive class but in method hiding you don't need to mention the virtual in the parent class method unlike method overriding the actual method calling is resolved at compile time so in case of method overriding the actual method calling is resolved at runtime but in method hiding the actual method calling is resolved at compile time so let's see how we can create a method hiding example so i'm just taking the previous example so i have just created a new solution here console application the project name is method id but this time if you remember last time we have created the employee class we have created the sales employee and here we have a method calculate salary and in the sales employee class we are just using the sales bonus as well for calculating the salary here this time not using the method overriding i'm just using a method id so just remove the virtual keyboard and place so override just use a new keyboard here so this is the example of now so what we have done in this example we have done i have removed over on uh, the virtual keyword from the base class method even in the child class method i have removed the override as well so with the help of new keyword we can hide the base class method calculate salary in the drive class so now when we will create the object of the sales employee it will be decided which method we are going to call so it will call the method from the sales employee class not from the employee class so let's create the object and define the salary here again i'm defining the 12,000, then bonus as well as a bonus i'm using here let's say 1000 now here just find out on the final salary so it will be here emp dot calculate salary and then console it console dot write then salary use here console dot or read key method so now you can see we are getting the output as 13,000. So this is the example of method hiding because now in the sales employee class, we are hiding the method from base class. So using the new keyword, you can use the method hiding. That's it.